Uh, Paul is exhorting his readers to have their thoughts directed to heavenly things instead of things on earth. Once again, his words, we have died to the things of the world, and so our hearts should be oriented to where we have been raised to instead. As the scholar Lightfoot says, you must not only seek heaven, you must think heaven. Okay, uh, there's an old saying, I repeat it from time to time to remind you of that. It's um, some people are so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. That's right. Okay, and that is true to an extent. That is true in the sense that some people, all they think about is not being here and they never get anything done here, like what we were just talking about with rapture setters, okay? They don't do anything productive in the church. They're like, you know, the spots on the uh, chair over there. They just may look good. They may not too, but anyway, they may look good, but they don't really do anything. You sit on the chair and the spots are covered. But um, uh, at the same time, we should set our mind on the heavenly things. And what that means is that we should always be focused on the things of God. That doesn't mean on heaven itself, like rapture set, date setters and that kind of thing, but on the things that are heavenly. Christ is in heaven, God is in heaven, our eternal home is in heaven. Our state should reflect what we will be like as much as possible. It's it's hard. I mean, it, you know, you go out and you want to have fun with your friends and you want to have, you know, whatever. You just want to be goofy with each other. And uh, there's a point where that becomes unheavenly, we'll say. Um, so you have to regulate and balance these things. But we should, uh, as he said, you must not only seek heaven, you must think heaven. And that means that uh, right now, Paul says, we're seated with God in the heavenly places in Christ. Okay, well, we should live that way. We shouldn't be living according to the things of this world. And, uh, you know, it, it, once again, it's hard. I understand that. It's a very hard thing to do because we're in this world. We get affected by this world. When we're sick, we, uh, you know, we get, Hidako knows if I get hungry, she, she's gone and I haven't eaten all day and she's supposed to be home at 5.30 and at 6.25 and she comes home without having stopped at the store. I'm in a really grumpy mood. My daughter and I, uh, we would call it hangry. We, we, our emotions mix and we get hungry and angry at the same time. And uh, my daughter is great at that, I'm great at that. And once I've eaten, I'm fine again, but I'm just irritable as I can be until I've had something to eat. And it's my fault, it's not her fault because I could have eaten something all day. But when I'm sitting at the desk and I'm typing a, a 12 or 13 hour long sermon, I never get up. I just sit there and I type and I think. And if I do get up, if something distracts me, I might lose 30 or 40 minutes of thinking, trying to figure something out. And so I try not to do that. And when I get up, if it's for something important, it's not for stopping at the refrigerator. I just don't do that. And then I've also heard that if you drink water, which is something I'm not inclined to do, I'm not a big water drinker, it helps you think. So if you're doing something and you want to think you want to drink water, well, I purposefully over the past two years or a year and a half brought water to the desk and I set it down and I, but then that makes you have to do something else. So <laughs> it, it interrupts my thinking again. But um, that's one thing. And uh, two, if you eat more than just a little bit, that decreases your thinking. They've done all the studies, even when I was a kid, they said, don't, if you eat breakfast, the worst time to take a test is like between nine and 11, because your brain is processing that food instead of uh, uh, whatever you're supposed to. And so they, they did these studies, they know the best time to take a test, they know uh, the best amount to eat and all that, but I just don't eat on like sermon typing day or when I'm doing something important at the desk. And uh, so you get into these earthly situations and it, it just, it affects you. And so uh, I understand. I'm not trying to say that uh, what I'm teaching you is the way I am. I'm teaching you because that's the way it should be. You should be thinking about heavenly things. You should be living the heavenly life. And it's not easy. You